The reason that's a big problem is because some people owe other people that debt. And the people that are owed the debt rely upon it being paid. But it can't be paid. So all this government debt and a lot of private debt is going to be defaulted on. Look, there's only two ways the government can pay off its debt. One, by taxing its subjects. And two, by inflating the currency. And they're doing both. And both are extremely destructive. So uh, we have a real problem here. That's why I say that we've embarked upon something I call the Greater Depression. And what's going to happen, or what is happening, is it's going to be much worse and much longer lasting and much different, this depression, than uh, the unpleasantness of 1929 to 1946. And uh, during that period, incidentally, uh, war was a big part of the equation. I think the war situation is going to get much more serious, quite frankly. These governments, uh, they're, they're capable of anything, telling people what to do, what not to do, what they can buy, what they can't buy, at what price, and so forth. It's entirely possible that the U.S. and Canada, for instance, are going to have foreign exchange controls in the future. Let's take the U.S. in particular. Most people are unaware of the fact that the major export of the U.S. isn't Boeings and soybeans or IBMs, any of that. The major export of the U.S. for the last 40 years has been dollars. We print up dollars and ship them abroad. And the nice foreigners ship us uh, Mercedes and Sonys and God knows what else. That's going to come to an end. And as it comes to an end, uh, the government will attempt to control its subjects, not control itself. And what that means in the monetary realm is foreign exchange controls, where you're going to have to ask approval to uh, send money out of the country, or perhaps even to travel within certain dollar limits. I mean, they can hardly prohibit travel, but they might say, sure, you can go abroad and take a European vacation, but you can't spend more than $5,000, I'll say, or something like that. I think that's in the cards. It's predictable. Because at some point, these scores of trillions of US dollars, which have been expatriated, shipped out all over the world in exchange for real goods that have come into the US, when that stops, the standard of living of the US has been artificially increased by, in effect, a, a debt. Dollars that are outside the US are really a debt. And when they come back to the U.S., what's going to happen is we're going to have trillions more dollars floating around inside the U.S., which means prices will go up, and the titles of land and businesses and share certificates are going to be owned by foreigners who will trade their dollars for those things. So uh, this is a real serious problem that I don't think many people are talking about. I should say the Federal Reserve prints up money. I mean, if they print up money in adequate amounts, there's no reason why the stock market should crash, although I've got to observe right now that in terms of price earnings ratio, price to book value ratio, all the uh, traditional parameters, the stock market is very, very overpriced. It's as overpriced as any time in history. So I really don't have any interest in being in the conventional stock market. It's too dangerous. Not saying it's going to crash. That's a question of printing money as much as anything else. But I don't want to be in it. I'm a long-term optimist. Why? I'll tell you why. Because, first of all, all people, at least mentally sound people, tend to produce more than they consume and try to save the difference. We're kind of wired like squirrels that way. That's number one. And number two, technology keeps advancing. And in fact, it's advancing at the rate of Moore's Law. So you add those two things together and you come out with a happy ending. But uh, at the same time, and this is why I'm gloomy for the short term, the world has in recent years been consuming more than it's been producing. That's what all the, world, all the debt in the world is about. And the amount of regulations that we have today and the level of taxes and the level of inflation make it much harder to produce and for technology to advance. So it could go either way, but I'm putting my money on what I call the Greater Depression, a period of time when most people's standard of living goes down significantly, and it'll be noticeable. So these guys pulling numbers like 3.2%, it impresses me as nonsensical. These are made up numbers. Well, here in Argentina, where I am right now, uh, we're in an anomalous situation because the current president, Javier Millet, is overturning 100 years of Argentine history, where this country has 
gone from one of the most prosperous and wealthiest in the world a hundred years ago to uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel where they say half of the Argentine population are in poverty at the moment, but he's turning that around. So my personal boots on the ground experience here in Argentina is not at all like what it is in the US or Canada. Things are getting better here. There's a period of readjustment where they're firing not just thousands, but tens of thousands of government employees. And, uh, you know, inflation has been running several hundred percent per year, which makes it impossible for the average Argentine to save money. That's changing, too. Here in Argentina, it's anomalous. Doesn't relate much to the U.S. or Canada. Well, let me comment on something that you, has, you said. What should government policy be? And the fact of the matter is, I don't believe in government policy. Now, that sounds like a shocking thing to say, I know. But the reason I don't believe in government policy is because government as an institution, assuming you even believe in government as an institution, uh, but it should only do three things. It should defend you from force and violence. That's all it should do. That implies an army to defend you from violence, force from outside the bailiwick of the government, police to defend you from criminals within its bailiwick, and a court system to allow you to adjudicate disputes. So this has nothing to do with government policy, actually. That's all the government should do. Unfortunately, in most places in the world, the government does everything but those three things. They, they try to regulate everything, tax everything, influence everything. It shouldn't do any of these things. I, I like to get down to the uh, kind of the basics. People forget what the basics are. And those are, those are the basics. Government is coercion. It's force comes out of the barrel of a gun, like Mao said. So I want to limit it extremely. You don't need or want a central bank anywhere. Anywhere. They're engines of inflation. Governments use central banks, talk about central banks being independent. This is nonsense. Central banks are used by governments as a means to inflate. And inflation is how government uh, generates a great deal of its income. It can, where does government get income? From taxes, okay, that's simple enough but also by printing up money, which it gets to spend. So no, the central bank serves no useful purpose. It should be abolished. P listen, people forget that before 1933, all the governments, all the countries of the world used gold as money in day-to-day -day commerce. You, d you didn't use fiat currencies, paper money. You used actual gold. And since then, we've had uh, endemic inflation. So no, abolish the central bank. North Americans have been forced to uh, buy inflation to get out of currencies and into hard assets. The hard assets go up in price as a result of inflation. And then when you want to sell them, the government steals 40 or 60 percent of that in the form of capital gains. So no, capital gains uh, taxes should be eliminated, not, not just reduced, but eliminated, not raised. These people have, these people are living in bizarro world. Trusting the government with more money to solve their problem is like giving, as P.G. O'Rourke liked to say, giving a 16-year-old boy keys to a Corvette and a bottle of Jack Daniels and telling him to go out and have a good time. If you want to solve the problem, you cut expenses. You stop spending because most of the money the government spends is on things that are not just stupid and non-productive, but they're actively destructive. You can start with the wars that they're fighting. In the case of the U.S., they're fighting on two fronts now, maybe soon on three fronts. It's going to bankrupt the country in addition to killing hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. Uh, in fact, maybe they'll go for billions of people in the future.